Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Jay Reads Knockin. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here today, we're going to learn how to make dark upbeat samples for Corday, previously known as YBN Corday. Now the samples we're going to learn to how to make today are not the jazzy soulful ones he sometimes does, but more like the ones like his song, What's Up with Young Thug. What's up? Mm -mm. I'm froze up. Mm -mm. Hockey puck. No, something, something. Don't not do it. Yeah, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? These samples are fairly diatonic. They usually use like four or five melodies out of the scale. They do retain some sort of dissonance and they stay dark and they, they don't get really bright melodic. Super, super simple to do and we're about to learn how to do them right now if you're new here consider knocking that subscribe button because i do drop one dope new video a week and i'm doing everything in my power to make sure you can become the best producer possible let's jump right in and make sure your core day samples are a1 <laughs> it's the rhythm and the bop is there but the sample is really cool so here's it Yeah, so as you can see, pretty vibey. Let's forget about the drums. Honestly, the sample is pretty simple. It started out pretty much just with this. And honestly, it didn't even have this little like quarter note, dun, dun, the C to D sharp. But yeah, so it didn't even have this. It was just half notes at first, like this, just the whole time. And um, obviously you can see the, uh, oh shit. Damn it, what did I just do? This is the EQ out of this low pass, take us on the high end. And I put this uh, four part, whatever, four voice doubler stereo. And then I added this distortion. I think this EQ is like the low cut with the high shelf automated in parts. Then I added this uh, reverb from Valhalla Massive. Then I added the halftime for parts of it, which is how it starts in the intro. Honestly, the first thing I did do was actually these bells. All right, so I started with these bells. Looks like this is a perfect fifth. This is a fifth as well. So C to D sharp. Yeah, this is a minor third. And then C to G is a, is a fifth again. So this was like relatively bright, but when you bring in the bells, it definitely just adds a vibe. For the effects chain, it was a lot different. So I have this EQ, then this to take out the lows at the end. I have this little gate, but the mix knob is really low, so it's just a little bit. This is a free plugin. Uh, I think it was just like a lead delay, so it made it a little thicker. And then this is like a distortion saturation plugin. And then obviously gain staged a little because I added a lot of gain. Before the effects chain, it was like this. Not the prettiest sound after. Is it 204800? All right, so after I put the effects on there, I rendered it as an audio clip. And then once it was bounced in the playlist as a wave, I went in there and changed the sample rate to down sample it so it has more of a vintage feel. The way you could do that is go to uh, right click audio, uh, edit an audio editor. Then you go here and you left click the sample rate, change this, it'll start at 48K change it to like like reduce it and mess with that and then make sure you click resample then click accept and um i you know downsampled it to 20k so it doesn't it doesn't pronounce as much of the bright frequencies and instead of this it sounds like this now
So it sounds more vintage and analog, and that's pretty much the goal with this type of stuff. We got the bell intervals. The melody started out with like three octaves. I made the lower part like really low velocity, so it's not taking up too much low end. And as it went up, it, it progressively went higher. So like the highest octave is the highest velocity. All right, let's do this. This is honestly like, I'm not even gonna explain. It's just this texture you can barely hear. Uh, you can hear it's close to like, almost like a sine wave. It's really not doing too much. But I added reverb to that and I just have it throughout the beat cause it kind of adds like some texture. Have this, this guitar. This was just like a contact bank that like automatically strums and I can't play guitar or bass guitar, but I just definitely just click this in too, just to add uh, the chord progression and make it a vibe. Processing for this. I added this uh, stereo compressor, decent threshold bus compressor. So I mixed it in 50%, a release of 300 and a fairly quick attack at three milliseconds with the ratio of three gain stages a little. Then I added some distortion and I added a little bit of dynamic EQ to cut out the highs and boost some of the low. And then just, uh, you can see. And then lastly, I put in this, which is the bass guitar. This is also a contact bank. This is the Garby Rickenbacker bass. And then it's the both stereo pure DJ <laughs> PM preset. Say what? I did this pattern. And what I did to really make this stand out is first I put this fruity distortion on here, you know, fairly cranking, right? And then I put this compressor, not doing too much, but again, with a fairly quick attack and like a medium similar uh, ratio to the other guitar. And then, you know, gave it some gain. I like the vintage preset. And then I just EQ'd out some high because I didn't need any of the high in the bass guitar guitar because the other melodies had plenty of that. Um, and then interestingly enough, what I did was I busted over to this next track and I cut out all the lows just so it's only the high end playing past 500 Hertz. And then I open up the stereo envelope 100%. So like it's kind of wide on the high end, but it's not messing with the low end. And all I did after that was, I think this was in a producer grind pack. This guitar one shot with like a super long decay. I didn't even change the pitch. And all I did there was. Here's the sample altogether. Yo, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, definitely leave a thumbs up. That helps tell YouTube that my content is not garbage, which hopefully it's not if you made it this far. And also at this point, you definitely should be knocking that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you here in a week and it's gonna be fire every time. And I'll see you here in two weeks and four weeks. And I'll see you for the rest of your life. Uh, it's like now, got a new video coming up maybe next week or the week after about buses and effects chains on buses and using auxiliary tracks. If you have any other video suggestions, drop them down below. And I just dropped a really cool video explaining why I'm switching from selling beats online to sample making and you can check that out right here bro definitely check that out man